my nickname came from my cousin. He's always be like, well, where he's always asked my mom, where's your brother? Or where's your brother instead of where's your brother? And so it kind of stuck. And it's been a name that I've used for a long time. But behind that name was a lot of <laughs> ungodly things, you know. Uh, so I represent myself as Julian now. Uh, because that's a transformation that God put in my life. That's a transformation that God wanted on me. <laughs> Um, I'm here to encourage you. Uh, I was incarcerated for eight years, and this moment I waited for. Uh, Pastor Gary uh, shepherded me. Uh, he led me. He told me that don't look at your time as being something that is a, a step back, but look at it as on a mission that you can go somewhere where I can't go. You can reach souls that I can't reach. So today, as your brother in Christ, I encourage you that though you have a setback or you have stumbling blocks, turn those stumbling blocks into stepping stones, right? You know what I mean? Uh, man, God is truly amazing and the spirit is just within me right now and there's so much that I want to say and there's so much that I want to give to you because God has blessed me with so much that that's how amazing he is. He will give you so much that you can give to somebody else. Man, when he says your cup runs over, oh man. This is truth. <laughs> this is truth that a man who was broken, beat down, is now healed, delivered, a fearing man of Christ. So I just want to pray for you today, uh, if you would with me today. I know that as we walked in here today, we didn't we didn't walk in here as everything was okay, right? Uh, I'm just being honest. Uh, um, as I know that we struggle with certain things as addiction, uh, sometimes we might need some reconciliation within family because sometimes families always don't agree, right? Um, sometimes we just need a little extra push and a little extra encouragement i'm here to encourage you that if you truly give it to god if you pray and say god i give you this i give you this i give you this and actually give it to him he'll do away with it but you have to believe it you have to believe it stand on what you pray about i don't want you going back and oh god i'm still sick no god thank you because you healed me god thank you for the healing that you have bestowed upon me so today I just I just want to pray. I just want to pray for this church and I just want to pray for you, Father God. Uh, we thank you today, Father, for not only giving us strength, Father, when we are weak, Father. Father, we just thank you that you were going to be by our side day in and day out, Father. When we go through all our weakest times, Father, we thank you for being there. Father, we thank you for right now, Father God, for this church, Father God. Father, as I pray that you be with our pastor today, Father that you fill his heart with grace and truth, dear Lord Father, and that when he speaks of you, dear Lord Father, that the people hear it, Father God, that your children hear it, Father God, for we are the beloved of Christ, Father God. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you, and we magnify you today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay. Normally, you say, okay, you don't have permission to mess me up like that. Um, but that's being messed up in the best kind of way right there. Um, man, anybody has the, the green light to do that when God gets the glory like that. Um, I say amen to that right along with you. Uh Today, the, uh, the, the title is, That's Not What I Heard. I was thinking a lot about our hearing this week, and 
uh, the things that we listen to and the way we listen and the way we take those things that go into our ears and the way we process. Uh, so many things get messed up in life and our hearing, don't they? Um, somebody says something one way and, um, and we hear it another way. Um, in today's world, somebody texts something and we hear it a certain way, right? Uh, it depends on how you read that text. It can be really pretty or it can be really ugly, depending on how you emphasize things in the words that, that come our way. So it's, it's involved in our hearing. We've done that too many times at the office. We'll, we'll have things come in and we'll read it like three different ways to try to see which one makes sense. <laughs> And uh, um, and it's just, it makes it tough that way when you can't have conversations in here. But uh, have you grown dull in your hearing is a question that we have to ask ourselves. Uh, when the question comes, that's not what I heard. I don't know if you were listening to the announcement. It cracked me up a little bit when Pastor Seth, when you gave the announcements today, and we said we had the backpack drive. And in my hearing... I heard what he said about the backpack drive. Maybe you had a bad school experience because he said, if you didn't, if you didn't hear it in your hearing, he said, we can, we can uh, donate backpacks and scissors <laughs> as examples. So <laughs> backpacks and scissors. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, just those two things came to your mind. <laughs> There's a lots of other things you can get for kids in backpacks too, okay? I'm just letting you know. Um, but that's what came out today. And I, I just laughed when we were going to talk about this, and that's what, what it was. In your hearing, what do you hear? Um, I want to I wanna just read Psalm 34. It was a section that I added, so don't try to scramble and think you're looking for something I didn't give you. I didn't give you this. Uh, Psalm 34. Some things I want to just lay here as a basis of Scripture for us today. I'm not reading all Psalm 34. I'm going to grab some things out, but I'm going to start with verse 1. It says, I will extol or bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips, the things that Julian was referring to. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear. And complain just a little bit. <laughs> For those other Bibles open, you know that's not what that said. Um, my soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Jump to 14. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. 17 and 18, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Interesting that Julian had talked about that. It's not all together when we show up. Uh, we're all going through something. We all have something in our life that can be a struggle, that could even be crushing you, but... but the Lord is close. He's close. He hasn't failed you and he's not going to start today. Uh, I think it's so important that we, and, and you're doing that today by showing up, is that if you want to really hear the presence of the Lord, you want to hear the way he's speaking to you, we begin by showing up even in a place like this. That's what I love when I get to talk to you that are here today because you have positioned yourself in a place to hear what the Lord has for you. If you watch any baseball, it's um, it's a trend that has, has been increasing over the years. But they they have big shifts in baseball now. You didn't, you didn't just see that when we were growing up. Everybody just played their position. You kind of moved a little to the left or to the right, depending on who was up. But now they'll they'll entirely shift the field to one side or another, depending on who's at the plate, because they know people so well. If you watch it at all, 
but they are positioning themselves to have the greatest success possible in the situation. Does that mean it's going to be 100%? No. Does that mean that things aren't going to get through and there's going to be a struggle occasionally and it's going to be perfect because they made the shift? No. But they position themselves in a place for the greatest possibility to go forward for the, what they're trying to accomplish. And that's what we do and what we need to do as believers in Christ is position ourselves to receive from the Lord, to hear from Him, to listen to what He has for us. And we do that by coming together. That's what's so important about being here today. Is that this is just something different that happens, supernaturally happens when we gather together as a people of God. Uh, he speaks to us in our spirit. He speaks to us in our quiet times. And when those are all important things. But there's just something that can only happen when we gather. And we can hear from the Lord. So I want to ask you, what's in your hearing? Maybe you haven't thought about that so quite so deeply. but Because what, what you hear is what you begin to believe and Sometimes those things you believe are not even in line with what God has for you. And next thing you know, you're way off wondering what went wrong. It can start from a, a word spoken, something that landed in your hearing that you began to believe it was not of God. Jesus himself was rejected at Nazareth in Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. And it says this, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, and on the Sabbath, he went to the synagogue, and he, as was the custom, and he stood up and he read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll he gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. You see how quiet it gets when the eyes are fastened. And then he began saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He just announced that I am God in the flesh sitting before you. Can you imagine sitting there? He's from your hometown. You watched him grow. You know, he's reading this and telling you that's who he is. So I wonder for us, I'm not done the talking about that, but what is in our hearing? How do, how do you hear this? What is it that you're, you're hearing when we, when we do this? Scripture fulfilled in your hearing. It didn't take very long until they totally came undone at what he had just said. So much so that remember we started, so they, they were praising him. Praising the things he was saying. And then he announces this. And by the time you get to the end of this chapter... They had taken him to the edge of town to a cliff and were all conspiring to throw him off the cliff to put an end to him once and for all. The crowd had him backed right to the cliff to throw him off. And the Bible says that he, untouched, just walked right through the crowd, just walked. He wasn't standing there looking for who's going to be first. Which one of you? No, he just walked through and nobody touched him. Because that's not how scripture was laying it out to be fulfilled. But it makes me wonder what's in our hearing. When, when people tell us what the Lord is doing and how God is moving, what are we really thinking? What are we allowing? What are we believing? 
See, what happens is that everything is exposed in the light, says in Ephesians 5, 13, and 14. Everything exposed to light becomes visible. And then the Bible says, wake up, O sleeper. Some of us need to wake up. Wake up, O sleeper. A few a little more attention all of a sudden. Wake up, O sleeper. When you're in sports, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, hey, heads up. Heads up. Get your head in the game. We have no problem hearing somebody yell that. We see something get a little bit down. Get your head in the game. Wake up. Pick it up a little bit. And we're like, tell him, coach. Get him, coach. Man, we just rally behind. But for some reason in church, wake up, old sleeper. Oh, back off. Don't be so loud. Just talk to us. We can hear you. <laughs> and we just we tend to just back down and be quiet and do this just a certain way. But man, we need to wake up a little bit. And hear what the Lord is saying. And what's He trying to get us to do is that we can't just gonna just stay doing the things we always do, the way we've always done it, the systems of operation that just don't change. I don't get it. When are we gonna wake up? When are we gonna wake up and say, you know what? Next week the two seats next to me are not gonna be empty. It doesn't fall on somebody else, it falls on me. And for as many times as I said it, I was not that active about inviting people to prayer tonight, but last week I asked a couple people to show up, and guess what? They showed up. Well, isn't that amazing? If you just start inviting people and asking people and telling people, man, they want to know. They want to be, they want to be acknowledged. They want to be seen. They want, they're, they're desiring something of the Lord, but, but we aren't asking. We got to start living it and putting them, uh, helping them get into the presence of the Lord, positioning them for something greater in their life. If we really believe that for us, then I want to believe it for somebody else too. I love how Jesus begins when he's talking to people. He, he talked in practical terms. I don't know. About you, was even even today, some of the things I talked about were just life stuff. It's just practical things that we face and do, and it's just it's life. And and Jesus was doing the same thing. Just things he would see that he knew you relate to, and I just love that about when you, you hear him speaking. And in Mark four twenty one through twenty five, it's a scripture of a lampstand. And are we going to allow Jesus now to have that same access for our life and the things that you face, the things that you do, the little details of your life? Are you going to give him that access for your life for those same things? Jesus here says, he said to them, do you bring a lampstand to put it under a bowl or a bed? I mean, simple stuff right away, right? No, I don't, I'm not hiding it. Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. You're almost waiting for something that's a little bit more right there, aren't you? But anybody that has ears to hear, let him hear. That means some of us can be in the room and not even hearing. Have you ever been with somebody in the room that isn't even hearing? I feel like I'm in that room right now. <laughs> have, you, have you been you've been there where you're talking to somebody and what and I've said this before but there's certain times if my wife has announced she wants to say something to me if I'm watching a game or something that's just a, that's just a train wreck waiting to happen get through the whole conversation and I don't even hear it till she says something like what do you think and I realize uh oh I just missed a whole bunch and you have to look and go uh, yes I, no, I, I don't know. I, did you try to come up with something? You, you weren't even listening. Were you? Well, no, tell me you were talking. I thought you were talking to somebody else, or I was watching this and I was so focused I didn't even hear. It, you know, it's it's didn't even hear. And I don't want to miss it. He has ears to hear. Let him hear. Verse twenty four says, "In this, consider carefully what you hear." So there's a way we need to listen. There's a place that we have to put our heart in a way that says, Lord, let me hear things the way that you want me to hear them. Allow me to go through life the way you want me to go through life. Don't let me just take things for the way that I keep getting it messed up and seeing it and hearing it and reading it and putting my own connotation to everything. Lord, how do you want me to hear this and respond? There's a big difference when we give him control to that in our life. 
Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. And even more. Whoever has will be given more, and whoever does not have, even what they have, will be taken from them. So what measure are you using? Boy, it becomes really important really fast when you read it in there that way. The way that we are judging people, the way that we are holding things against people, the way that by the same measure you use, I'm going to measure that back to you. Man, I don't know if I want you to do it that way, Lord. I kind of want you to listen to my side of it and see if maybe I'm making a good point. And I spend way too much time doing that where it doesn't really matter. It's what he's trying to accomplish. And I need to just start to see beyond the natural into the supernatural for what he is trying to accomplish through the situation, regardless of how messed up it might seem at the time. Because he has a grand plan that is in place. Mark 4, 39 through 41 is a section of scripture where Jesus calms the storm. And I want you to see, when I talk about the supernatural, there's something greater going on than you could even imagine, and how great our God is and how much control he really has. This section of scripture speaks to that. You think your situation, and how could God know, or is that really him? Yet when we see that in, in the grand scheme of creation, and us being made in his very image, and the rest of creation is creation, the way that he designed it to be. Then us made in his image, even, man, made with, with that is so special. But then look how creation itself responds. They're crossing over the sea, and it's, the, the storm rages, and they have gotten out of control, and they're going to lose the boat. This is Jesus, he got up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, Quiet, be still. As if they had ears. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? You still have no faith. And they were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this, that even the wind and the waves obey him. So you can be spending time even with the Savior and miss who he is. We could show up here week after week and not even know him. You know about him. They were spending time with him, and yet they were the ones asking the question, who is this? That he can speak to creation, the wind and the waves. And when he spoke to creation, it listened and immediately calm. I don't know if you've ever been in water when it's going crazy, but that would get your attention. It really would. And here's how this is, speaking of creation again. If we need to position ourselves as I talk about us being made in Christ's image, do you realize that creation itself has positioned itself so much so that they, it's, it's gotten even in front of us? You think of the society today and how far we've gotten from obeying God and following His ways and trusting His word and, and, and seeking Him with all of our heart. And more you see this attitude of just some of that here, some of that there. But that's not really all for today and just not even acknowledging. And yet creation itself, the creation is is longing for his appearing. And that's creation. That's not those of us who are made in his image that should be singing his praise and praising his name and longing for his glory. All oh, that that I cannot wait until his return to take me into his presence. And making sure the world knows around us. Romans 8, 19 through 23. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay 
and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who had the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. If creation is longing for it, so should we. It's telling us we have the because the spirit of the Lord the spirit of the Lord lives in us, man. That, it's, that's how it should naturally be. And if that isn't happening in us, we got a question: of What do you know the Lord? Sometimes we want to just dumb it down and say, if we can get enough hands, just go up and just then 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 here it is. They just then they just know Jesus and they're off on your merry way. We covered that, and I'm telling you what: there's a life to live. There's a surrendering of your life, and it's been paid for by the blood of Jesus. He died for that life so that we may live according to his purpose, not our own. And if you're living according to your own purpose, you've got to ask yourself that question. I'm not the judge. The Bible tells us how to live. If you get mad at me for saying that, get mad at the Bible. I'm telling you what the Bible says about that. But the Lord Jesus loves us enough not to leave us in our condition, but to rescue us that we may live in Him. So we don't just stay the same. It becomes a natural experience of us just living, living it out because of who He is. The questions of, if, if only I, I wrote down here, if, if, if only I could have... Did you ever? I've done this before, maybe you have too. Can you imagine if you could just choose one of the Bible miracles to be at? If you could choose one of them, it would be different for all of us here. But man, which one would you want to see? Would you maybe just be in the crowd and watch it happen. There's got to be some big hitters in your life that there's just something that, that's those big miracles you think, I would have loved to watch that go down. I would, I would, in fact, if I knew what I know now, I could be standing in the crowd. Can you imagine you, if you know what's about to happen? Moses walking toward the Red Sea, and they don't see anything happening. And I'd be like this, nudging you, hey, 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 watch, watch, watch this, watch, watch, watch. Wait, hey, watch when he hits the water. Watch this, watch, here he comes. I mean, we'd just be all just geeked up, ready, just whoosh, the water just parts. Oh, man, that's just one of them. But have you ever just thought of that? Just what, what would it be? If only. Joyce Meyer wrote a little piece right here I want to share with you. It says, one thing used to puzzle me very much about the children of Israel. They saw the miracles of Moses performed. They witnessed the ten plagues that destroyed the crops, animals, and firstborn sons, and yet never touched any of them in the land of Goshen. They stood at the Red Sea and watched the waters part, and later looked back to see the Egyptians drown. They experienced miracle after miracle for 40 years. I used to ask, why didn't they believe? They personally watched signs and miracles take place, but they remained unbelievers, except for Joshua and Caleb. Every adult who watched God at work in Egypt died before the waters parted at the River Jordan. One day as I read the passage, the answer became obvious. We don't understand God through our natural eyes or human reasoning. We understand God only when we are aided by the Holy Spirit. Those Israelites in the wilderness saw miracles, but they never experienced God. They saw the miracles at work, but they never grasped God himself. That's the message Paul presents to us. He says, God has prepared us, those who believe and obey, and he unveiled and revealed spiritual realities through the Holy Spirit. Another way to say this is that as long as we look only at events and facts, but see nothing behind them, we don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. See, something supernatural has to happen in you to see beyond into the supernatural of what God is doing. And if we haven't done that, we start just having all the questions and realities of why it can't be so. And that's why I become cynical when somebody gets a healing that, well, they must have just had that made up in their head. They're okay now, but since I can't really see what's happening, I don't know if that was really real or not. 
don't know how to take it. I don't know how to really stand on that. I don't know how to preach it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to pray for it because I don't know if I trust God at that level. And we have all these questions that start to take over rather than just believing God because we know who he is. And we know he's able. And we know he's done it before and he can do it again. And we start standing on his word and we are unashamed of it. And we start swinging for the fences and not even caring because we know well that his purposes are possible. And there's going to be those moments when we're going to go home to glory. But there'll be also be those times where he heals somebody because of how great he is. That his name would be known that somebody could come to him. Not for our purpose. And so to God be the glory, we go on. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 10 says, No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him, into the supernatural. These are the things God has revealed to us by the Spirit. The Spirit teaches all things, even the deep things of God. So we need, we need the power of the Holy Spirit helping us understand and knowing what is going on. Have you ever had to say that in your life? I don't know what's going on. But if I find out, <laughs> it almost sounds like there was some evil intent on the other side of that. If I get to the bottom of this one, maybe, Lord, help me understand that I could respond the way you'd have me to. He's already at the bottom of this one. He already knows what's going on. I don't need to beat him there. If I get to the bottom, he's there. I get to the top, he's there. I get somewhere in the middle, he's still there. He's still in control. That's who he is. And it's something interesting that happens when we, when we know him. David and Goliath was a great story of that, of understanding that. With David and Goliath, they were just stricken with fear as Goliath, the, the, the champion, stood before them and just taunted them. Day after day, for 40 days, he just, just, just kept running them down, and they, they shook with fear at the idea of coming because they didn't understand the supernatural. They didn't know God that way. They, they knew of God, but they just didn't know God at the level that David knew God, walking with him, talking with him, giving every moment of his day to him. Understanding that when the rescue came, he gave God the glory. When God gave the way to, to accomplish something, he gave God the glory. It's so important that when God does something in your life, you give him the glory. If we just keep taking it for ourselves, that's self-serving. But if God has done something in your life, if he's rescued you in some way, it becomes your responsibility to encourage somebody else, to tell somebody else, to share that along the way. They might look like you look at you like you got three eyeballs, but it doesn't make any difference. You tell them what Jesus Christ has done in your life and how he rescued you, how he saved you, how he came alongside of you, how he comforted you, how he provided for you, how he healed you. You just let people know who he is. Don't back off from that. It's our duty to do that because we know what a great God that he is. And that's who David was. So when he heard it, also he gets sent just on this, this mission to bring food and supplies to the front lines and finds everybody hiding in foxholes. And he looks over and, and there's their taunting coming in. And he's like, who is this cat that can talk about our Lord this way? That wasn't even fitting at all to him. Well, then well, well, why are we doing something about it? Well, huh? <laughs> Do you see how big he is? He didn't even see that at all. And so that he wants to be the one, just let me go. And he gets mocked and tormented in the middle of it. I'm telling you, it's, just, it's amazing. In 1 Samuel, you need to read that section of Scripture sometime. In 1 Samuel 17, you just watch how this unfolds. There's a, there's a piece of Scripture in there that says, though, what happened. And think about hearing today. talks about all the armies hearing what Goliath chanted. And not knowing God well for themselves, 
they were stricken in fear. Maybe some of you are in fear. But when the Bible says, when David heard in his hearing, it didn't match up with how great his God was. And he was not claiming victory for himself. He was saying, because of who God is, you're going down. In the name of our great God, he picked up five stones. You had him here. He loaded one up. And the Bible says he ran into battle all through. It started with what he heard. And it didn't match up. See, when we get into God's word, we begin to study it. It becomes part of who you are. When things hit your hearing that aren't lining up, you'll rise up. Wait a minute, that doesn't line up. That does not sound like my God. It doesn't sound like who he is. I may not understand what's going on right now, but I know who my God is. I know he's faithful and he'll take me through. No matter what the circumstance is right now, he will see me through this. When we begin to rise up against those things in our life, and believe me, things will start to adjust and change in your life when you do that. You don't start taking things into your own hands. I don't care if it's relationships. I don't care if it's if it's health issues, I don't care if it's financial problems. You don't take it into your own hands. You take it into your own hands, and if all falls apart at some point, oh, where's God? You, it's been in your hands all along. Give it to Him. Trust Him. He has, he has something for you in this. He's not going to bail out on you. He didn't bail out on David. I'm going to ask our worship team to come forward if they would. I'm back to where Julian started today, thinking that I don't know completely what you've gone through. I don't know what the things that you've heard, what people have told you, just about yourself. Not about to unveil something ugly of the church or ugly of what's going, but just things get taken the wrong way, things are said the wrong way, things get, and people just they, they go crazy just saying things and believing things. We used to do a little little circle in, in our youth group thing where you would you'd give a little short paragraph to the first person, and they were able to look at that paragraph, and they could whisper in the ear next to them the paragraph. They would hear that, and they would whisper to the person next to them the paragraph right around the circle. And by the time I got back to the person sitting on this side, they would give the report of the paragraph that you started with. And no matter how many times we did it, it wasn't even close to what started right here. Now that's just in one circle of people in a small circle going around a room. And you think we don't get things messed up in life? And our hearing doesn't get all crazy because we, wanna, we start hearing things the way we want to hear it? The way we want to believe it? And then the, the problem with that, we start to hear it and believe it that way. We start sharing it out to other people like, we've got it now. I've got the information. So we start to share it out, that negative thinking. Next thing you know, people are, are leaving the church and going here and going there. All over things that could have been corrected all along. So saying, wait a second. Do you realize how bad this is making our great God look? Did you think about that for a moment? And God's not going to trace that back to see where did that come from? He already knows. Some of us that are starting acknowledging that our own spirit, man, what am I doing? What am I hearing? What am I listening to? What am I saying? What is, has become of all of this? I just think it's time that we start practicing what we preach. And I say that to me. Start practicing what you preach. But we're here together in a family meeting saying that. Let's, can we agree to that? That our words are going to be uplifting and we're going to hold each other up. And we're going to pray for each other. And we're going to encourage each other. And we're going to love each other. We're going to hear a wrong that's done to even us and we're going to love right through it. We're going to forgive right through it. We're going to have the enemy so baffled he's not going to know what to do.
Because love covers a multitude of sins. And so love will reign supreme in our lives. We just determine that. We begin to realize God's greater plan. It was God who gave me the word to tell Julian. I didn't know what to tell Julian when I got called in there and he's going into to serve for eight years, almost eight years in prison. I didn't, I didn't know what to tell him. But when he came before me in fear and trembling on that day, it just dropped in my spirit. I had no speech plan at all. I just said, Lord, you got to help me. And he, I said, Julian, listen, buddy. You got to understand you're, you're entering a mission field right now. You're in a mission field that I can't go. You're going to go in the behind bars and cells and places inside those, those facilities that I'm not even allowed access to. But the name of Jesus is great, and through you, the name of Jesus can walk right in. <laughs> and through that, there was report after report after report of people that he was able to speak to and give the love of Jesus to and share with, and his spirit began to soar, the things that would be written to us and encourage us on the outside. It was, it was just crazy to think, how can this guy be inside and sound like that? I know he must have had down days. I know you must have wondered where people were at, must have felt forgotten and wondered, does anybody even remember I'm in here? But I can promise you without even looking at him, I can know he'll say, but I know that God never forgot me. He never left me. So these are the things that are getting into your hearing today. They're in your hearing. They get into your hearing, into your spirit. They become who you are because my great God, he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. I don't care what you said about me. We go forward in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and that's what we need. Philippians 4, 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me and seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. How cool is that? <laughs> the presence of the Lord with you by the power of his spirit living inside of you. And it comes by receiving Jesus as your personal savior and allowing him access to your life that you could be all surrendered wholly and completely to him. So let me just pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these great people. Lord, I just pray if somebody wants to come to know you today that they won't even hesitate on coming down the aisle, Lord. If they want to return to you today, they wouldn't even hesitate for coming down the aisle. If they just need you, just your support, Lord, just to be all in for you again, Jesus, I pray they wouldn't hesitate. Remove fear from their life. Lord, this is the walk they need. This is the walk they need. So, Lord, give them the courage to rise up and walk. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. If the Lord has spoken to your heart, we ask you to come right on down and meet us on the wall over here. we got people ready to pray with you for whatever your need is. And let the Lord do something great in your life starting right now.